Hello, I'm Jerry Van Dyke. Please make a donation to the Carnegie Council's annual fund. It will directly support programs such as the video you're about to watch. These are very challenging times. Please keep the voices for ethics alive. Go to carnegiecouncil.org and click on the button, Mark Support. Thank you. Will countries like China in terms of um, growth ambitions, energy ambitions, will they achieve the kinds of transformations we're talking about without substantial sharing of technology and substantial finance? The answer is no. And I've, I described briefly some the importance of sharing technologies, but let's look at the kind of schemes of the trading finance variety that could do it. I don't, some of you will know about the Clean Development Mechanism, which is a project-by-project project, uh, trading arrangement. It's mostly, it's, it's designed under Kyoto, but mostly driven by the European Union Emissions mm -hmm. Trading Scheme, whereby uh, a country, a, whereby a firm that has to meet a target under the European Union Emissions Trading Scheme can buy a reduction in a developing country. But it's organized on a project basis, and the, the country itself has to show Oh, sorry, the firm in the developing country, which is selling it to the firm in the rich country, has to show, and it has to be approved by various committees at the country level and bond and, and so on, it has to show that it will be cutting its emissions relative to what it might have done. Now, might have done is a counterfactual. You want to know what I might have done? Well, here's what I might have done. You know, it's quite difficult to work with this kind of apparatus, and it's very, very heavy. What we're going to need for a while, I think for 10 or 15 years, possibly more, and we do have to negotiate this as Copenhagen, is a successor to the clean development mechanism, which is one-sided trading in the sense that you get rewarded if you go down, but you don't get penalised if you go up, um, which can work on a wholesale way. So if a province of China decides under its programme that it's going to uh, have no further investment in coal-fired without carbon capture and storage, then we can identify quite clearly the kind of reductions that that would involve, much more easily than the project-by-project project scheme. And what we should be envisaging is wholesale funds uh, which arise from the ambitious kind of caps we've got in Europe and I trust will have in the US, so that firms can buy into that fund and that fund could take a slice of this province of China that's, uh, that's embarking on this um, program. So I think if we replace the clean development mechanism with something that's much more suitable for wholesale, that's programmatic as opposed to project-based, then we could um, envisage uh, financial flows. And we've been modelling them a bit, and they probably would be of the order of somewhere between 100 and 200 billion a year by the 20s under these kinds of trading arrangements. That's the kind of um, financial structure, trading structure, that we would need for a while to support these kinds of investments. And we've got to be quantitative and open and direct about what's involved. There's another story, of course, in proving that these uh, carbon capture and storage technologies work on a commercial scale, and that's something we have to embark on again as a world where different countries do different things. The Australians are doing a few, are doing a few in the UK, I'm sure. Canada's doing a few, be, I'm sure there'll be more than a few in the US. So at the, at the same time as we work on the finance, we have to work on the sharing of the technology uh, as well. But that's exactly the kind of detail we have to work on, and we have to be frank about the scale of what's, uh, what's involved.